and spectral theory of Jacobi matrices. Sort of yeah. Abstract so, 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 a bit. So, sort of a mix of, of two of those. Uh, the, thing is that I'm, the thing that I'm going to tell you is a joint work with Sasha Sodin. And in this work, we study uh, semi-infinite Jacobi matrices. These are three diagonal matrices, which I will denote by J, A, B, uh, which are, I have Bs on the main diagonal and A's on two other diagonals. And we will assume that base B and A's are bounded real sequences, namely Bn is between capital C and minus capital C, and An between a capital C and some small c, where small c is strictly greater than zero, strictly smaller than a capital C, strictly smaller than infinity. <laughs> In this case, uh, it uh, defines a bounded self-adjoint operator on L to N, which is defined by J Psi of N equal to A N Psi N plus one plus A N minus one Psi N minus one plus B N Psi N, where formally a Psi of zero is equal to zero, and this is exactly the boundary condition. Uh, yeah, since I'm speaking on on the on, on, on the semi-infinite case, a semi-infinite case, yeah. Although it's kind of not really matters, as we will see, it it, it is possible to extend to to whole. Yeah, yeah, it it can be not not <laughs> exactly in the same way that I will state it today, but it can be extended to the whole wide. Um, um, the spectrum of of. Uh, uh, JAB, which I will denote by a small sigma of JAB, defined as a set of all of the real energies for which the operator J minus E is not invertible. The essential support of the absolutely continuous spectrum, which at some point I will be, be tired to say the essential support, so I will just say AC spectrum, uh, which usually denoted by capital sigma with the subscript AC, uh, defined as an equivalence class up to sets of zero Lebesgue measure of the set of all of the real energies for which the limit when epsilon goes to zero of the imaginary part of the scalar product of delta one, the inverse of j minus e minus i epsilon acting on delta one exists and differs from zero. Um, and this is my setup for now. Um, one of the central questions in spectral theory of uh, Jacobi operators is the one that deals with the measure of its spectrum and in particular with the measure of its absolutely continuous part. So as uh, regarding to the measure, to the Lebesgue measure of, of the spectrum, it's, this question is less interesting since the spectrum can be uh, basically of, of any measure, it can be as large as possible. But the question uh, about the measure of the absolutely continuous part is much more subtle. And the starting point of uh, my discussion today will be the following inequality. The Lebesgue measure of the absolutely continuous spectrum of the operator J1B. And when I'm writing this in this way, I mean that uh, all ANs are identically one, smaller than or equal than four. The proof of this inequality, which I will denote by star, since I will refer to it several times during this talk, first was proved in 83 by Dyft and Simon, and they did it only for the case with the assumption that the operator is ergodic. 
Another proof of this inequality came in, two, in uh, 94, which was given by last, and once again, only for the case that the operator is robotic. Um, the first proof, actually, <laughs> which we learned while we was doing that, uh, of, of, of this inequality without the ergodicity assumption came only at 2008 uh, and was given by Polturatsky and Remling. who proved that uh, the Lebesgue measure of the absolutely continuous spectrum of JAB is more than or equal than a four times lin inf when n tends to infinity of, ge of the geometrical means of an. And I would like to emphasize on that point that the fact that here is a instead of ones it's not the, uh, the important extension. The important extension is that uh, uh, Polterotsky and Remling uh, uh, managed to get rid of the ergodicity assumption. Ergodic means what in this context? Uh, I don't really like, don't, I, I don't want to uh, exactly to, to define ergodic operators since I will not use it, but I will say one thing which this a really wide class of operators, which, for example, includes random operators, uh, periodic operators, quasi-periodic operators, almost periodic yeah, operators. Sort of exactly. 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 I can also say mm -hmm. that basically, if somebody with, is fam more familiar with the uh, ergodic theory and notions, then ergodic operator is the ones that for which those sequences. B's and A's are ergodic sequences, which is produced by, by some uh, shifts of the ergodic transformation. Uh, for the simplicity, I will assume for the rest of my talk that all ends are identically one. And uh, I, will, uh, I will say something about it a little bit later. Um, the inequal this inequality star is sharp in the following sense. If you look at the free Laplacian, which is the operator for which uh, all ans are identically one and all bns are identically zero, namely this kind of operator, then we know that its spectrum is a, a, a single interval minus two two, and it's purely absolutely continuous. Namely, the spectrum coincides exactly with the absolutely continuous spectrum, which is exactly the interval minus 2, 2. And therefore, we have that the Lebesgue measure of, uh, of, of the absolutely continuous spectrum is exactly 4. <laughs> namely, what we have is that for an arbitrary uh, operator, for any arbitrary operator, we have the following inequality is that the Lebesgue measure of the absolutely continuous part of the spectrum of some operator smaller than or equal than that of the free Laplacian, which is exactly 4. Uh, therefore, uh, the natural question is, I will first say it and then I will write it down, if B takes more than one value, and those values somehow, in some sense, are far apart, is it possible to obtain some more precise estimate? If B takes more than one value, and this values are far apart. Are no, I'm not. That's the whole point. I'm not assuming anything. Okay. Is it except the boundness? But uh, somehow also that I do not really need to assume. Okay. Uh, I can say something about it at the end. 
Is it possible to obtain a more precise estimate? Yes, and yeah. I actually, actually, I will, I will answer pretty much this question okay. in five minutes or oh, so. <laughs> uh, um, now, the original proof of Daft and Simon, <laughs> fairly to say, it's rather complicated and it uses a modern complex analysis. We were able to prove this inequality using only classical approximation theorem, and moreover, to obtain a more precise estimate, which, which indeed takes into account the distribution of the values of B, although, uh, uh, and therefore we answer, although very, very, very partially, this question. And the precise formulation is as follows. Consider an interval EL, ER. And there's absolutely no restriction on the values of EL and ER, they may be infinite. Now I will denote by IN the set of all of the indices for which BJ is in the extended interval EL minus 3, ER plus 3. And we need this 3 for a technical reason only, which also you'll see exactly in, in which point it will, it will come into. Uh, I will denote by DN the product of all of the J, all of the indices between N and N, which are not in IN, of the following, uh, of the actual distance from BJ to the interval minus 2. And then our theorem says that um, under these notations, the Lebesgue measure of the absolutely continuous spectrum of the operator J1B, in which once again, I do not assume ergodicity, I do not assume anything except what I already assumed, intersecting with the interval EL, ER, is smaller than or equal than four times lim inf, 1 over dn to the power of 1 over number of in. Now, before I proceed any further, let me say several remarks. First of all, if all of the bj's are in, the extended, in, in this extended interval, namely this product is empty, we define this product to be exactly 1. Then, for example, if we take our interval to be minus infinity, infinity, we exactly recover polterotsky remnant If none of the BJ are in the extended interval, then uh, uh, we, uh, we prove that the Lebesgue measure of this intersection, as you can guess, is zero. Actually, we prove a slightly stronger statement. We prove that if the limit of the size of i n divided by n is zero, then uh, the Lebesgue measure of the intersection is zero. inside of this extended interval. Mm -hmm. And we prove that if actually uh, this size is much somehow smaller than n in some sense, then the Lebesgue measure of, of this intersection is zero. Now note that the n is much larger when bj is far from our interval. 
So therefore, basically, the N, you can think about the N as something which, uh, which me uh, measures the number of BJs that are far from our interval. And uh, note that the N is always at least one. Now, but <laughs> since I do realize that uh, the notation, even with all these remarks, is a, a bit heavy, if not a very heavy, I would like to demonstrate the use of, of this theorem on a relatively simple example. Yeah. No, no, then we define then we define the n to be one, just one. It's an empty product. Since all the indices are actually inside the interval. Right. So but the n is just one. Exactly. Okay. So and uh, the use uh, or our in or this theorem which I will uh, would like to show you now is on the periodic operator. And I will call Usually it's called J1B periodic of period Q. Uh, if B is a periodic sequence of period Q, namely Bn plus Q is equal to Bn for any n greater than or equal to 1. Now, uh, so I will assume that J is periodic of period Q. And I will say in a, in a second what exactly Q is. Now I assume that B takes only two values. It takes value 0, m times in each period, and it takes value r, which is greater than or equal than 5, l times in each period. So now you see that my period is exactly m plus l. Now, first of all, let us note that in this case, the absolutely continuous spectrum of this operator is contained in the union of the intervals minus 2, 2 with the interval r minus 2, r plus 2. And the easiest way to see that is, the follow, uh, is as the follows. Consider a, a diagonal operator, strictly diagonal operator, which has zeros and r on its diagonal. Then it have exactly two eigenvalues, 0 and r. Now I will perturb it by the free Laplacian. So we know that the spectrum of this diagonal operator can move at most by the norm of the perturbation, which is in this case the norm of the free Laplacian. Namely, all the new eigenvalues may spread around 0 and r at most by 2. And therefore, we have this inclusion. Now, let me uh, um, apply our theorem to each of these intervals. So I will do that uh, for the first interval, and then for the second, it's just it's exactly the same. Now, what is the IN in this case? IN is exactly all of the indices for which BJ is inside minus 2 minus 3, 2 plus 3, which is minus 5, 5. And here you have the idea why I need r to be greater than or equal to 5. So we, for any r, unfortunately, for any r which is smaller than 5, we cannot touch anything. But since I assume that r is greater than or equal to than 5, then we see that the only thing which falls into that is actually 0. So the only thing which is participated in the, in the product is r. So my dn is the product over all of the indices which are not in in of the distance from r to, the, to this interval minus 2. And now the only thing that I need to tell you is what's the size of a n, at least approximately, and what is actually the n, also at least approximately. So the size of a n approximately is the number of periods which I have till I reached n 
times the number of times that uh, zero appears in each period, namely n over m plus l times what I, I m. And from the same reason exactly, my dn is approximately uh, r minus 4 uh, to the power of n over m plus l times uh, l. So therefore, when we're passing to the limit, we see that the Lebesgue measure of this intersection smaller than or equal than 4 divided by r minus 4 to the power of uh, l over m. Exactly in the same way, we have that the Lebesgue measure of the intersection with the second interval, r minus 2, r plus 2, is smaller than or equal than 4 divided by r minus 4 to the power of m over l. Now, this, these inequalities are sharp, including the constant in the following sense. If r is large enough, then I can always find such a potential B for which it's going to be almost an equality. So therefore, this is partial answer for your we question. Can, we can find a, a, a sequence of zeros and, and, what, and, and R's. R's. So that this inequality is... Almost equality, equality. yeah. Almost yeah. But now, if I let the R's be like, like one, zero and one, <laughs> then I, we cannot dodge that. But, but partially because, partially somehow <coughs> it's very pity, but partially it's because this a uh, very unclever estimate. Yeah, but, my, my, but you, you can actually calculate, of course, if you, the period isn't very long, like, you know, period two, period three, you can calculate it with plus a period. Yeah, that's true. And then, and then what does it tell you? Does it tell you that it's less than four or not? No, that, uh, the fact that it's less than four, you know, always. The point yeah, is how right. much it's less exactly, so and then you. Know you that four can only be achieved for the for, for Laplacian, is that right? For the constant, for the potential which is constant, the shift of the Laplacian. Yeah. So, so then the question is, yeah. So I guess yeah. So you want to make it quantitative, how much less than four? Is exactly, possible. we couldn't do <coughs> a really nice quantitative result, but at least for R, which is greater than or equal to five, this very quantitative. Uh, now, in order, um, oh, okay, uh, if we look at this once again, and we then we see that when r tends to infinity, both of the sides actually tends to zero. So namely, the Lebesgue measure of the absolutely continuous spectrum tends to zero, and this is we already know from the general theory, since we do know that for unbounded operator, there is no absolutely continuous spectrum. Now, in order to formulate another result, I need one more definition. Uh, any questions that uh, up until now? Okay, I need one more definition. And um, for any n, for any natural n, I defined kn of e to be 1 over n number of the indices so that lambda j is more than or equal to e, when lambda j are the eigenvalues of the top left n by n block of my operator. And now I'm looking at k of e, which I will define to be the limit when n tends to infinity of kn of e. And here I'm a little bit cheating. This Usually, this is called, whenever it is, exists, integrate the integrated density of states. And it is known to exist uh, in the case that the operator is ergodic, but it does not have to exist in the case that the operator is not ergodic. And I, do, I will return to that issue. Now, in the same paper of 83, Dyft and Simon proved the following inequality regarding the integrated density of states. They prove that d to the e of minus 2 cosine pi k of e, which is exactly 2 pi sine 
pi k of e dk of e to the e is greater than or equal to 1 for almost every e in the absolutely continuous spectrum of the operator. And now since here I'm writing actually k of e, I'm not, not saying anything, then you already can guess that they prove that only for the case that the operator is robotic. Now, from the definition of kn, it is quite easy to see that k of minus infinity, it's... Exactly. And now actually I will say you why they needed the ergodicity there. Since they actually obtained the star as a, a straightforward corollary from this inequality. Since once again, k of minus infinity is zero, k of plus infinity is one, and therefore by the integration, we can see that the integration from minus infinity to infinity of two pi sine pi k of e dk of e to the e de, which is exactly four, greater than or equal than the integral on the absolutely continuous spectrum of one de, which is exactly the Lebesgue measure of the absolutely continuous spectrum. Um, <coughs> now, Using the same methods of the classical approximation theory, we were able to obtain a corollary of this inequality, of this one, and then actually using this corollary to obtain this inequality in full generality, namely without the ergodicity assumption. In this case, as I already said, the integrated density of states, uh, this limit does not always exist, so we pass to a subsequence for which it is exists, and by compactness, we, we always have such a subsequence. But first, let me formulate the corollary of, of this inequality. Uh, now, I assume that J is periodic of period Q. Then we know that its spectrum, it is a union of Q closed intervals which often called bands, and the union with finite number of the eigenvalues. And this thing here actually appears only because I'm looking on the half-line operator. If I wasn't looking on the half-line operator, then it's, it simply uh, does not exist. But uh, um, actually, the essential spectrum, which is exactly the spectrum without these finite numbers, it is just a, a, a union of Q-closed intervals, Q-bands, and it's purely absolutely continuous. That's what we know for, for the periodic operator. And for the rest, I will just ignore all this issue with these eigenvalues. So um, the theorem says, that the Lebesgue measure of, of the J's band is smaller than or equal than two times cosine pi J minus one over Q minus cosine pi J over Q. And equality is attained if and only if B is a constant. Daft and Simon obtained this inequality similarly to the way that they obtained star, but instead of the integrating from minus infinity to infinity by integration at the edges of the bands. <laughs> uh, we do things differently. First, we obtain this inequality using only uh, the extremal properties of some polynomials, and then using this inequality we obtain a, a, this local dive time on inequality in full generality without assuming their ergodicity. Namely, the precise statement is as follows. Um, uh, suppose J1B 
is Jacobi operator, of course bounded, uh, but I already assumed that, so I will not, uh, I will not repeat that. Uh, and and I is a subsequence sequence for which the limit of k and i when i tends to infinity exists, and I will denote it with this strange uh, subindex. Then we have the local inequality for this partial limit. Then uh, 2 pi sine pi k and i of e dk and i to the e of e is greater than or equal to 1 for almost every e in the absolutely continuous spectrum. And now, of course, that if j is ergodic operator, then this limit exists, and we recover the dive time and inequality now, once again. Yeah, I'm saying that suppose we have some operator yeah. and some subsequence for which this limit actually do exist. Okay. Then we have the local inequality for this subsequence. Just instead of doing this for the integrated density of states, which will not surely exist in the non ergodic case, we're doing for any partial limit. Some yeah, for any partial limit. I don't care about what kind of limit that is. And then, and then, then, then you get the same result. Uh, the same result, exactly. And so that, that's why, once again, <laughs> if J is ergodic operator, then of course the limit exists, and then we recover the F Simon once again. Something like that. You can think about it like that. Exactly. 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 But the point is, which is kind of more important, is that nobody knew before that that on every such a subsequence you actually will have this inequality on the AC spectrum. Yeah, of course, since uh, there, it, it, it's uh, somehow from, from the beginning, it, it is very intuitive that it should be, but then one can ask why can it be that you have some very bad behavior in subsequence for which limit exists, but for which the density of state somehow very strange and it does not, uh, it does not uh, um, obey this, this inequality. So, uh, my goal for the rest of the talk is to prove you this inequality, the star, using our methods. And for the simplicity, I will do so that. Are you, are you going to prove this inequality of a, a, a dive time? Or are you going to do this completely differently? Are you going to take this derivative? Are you going to do something like that derivative or not? Wh where? Like the d d e of the of cosine of k d e. I, I, I'm sorry. sorry. I, I didn't so understand the question. This, no, no, now I'm going to prove only the star, just okay. in order to give you to feel what, what are the methods. Yeah, sure. Since now. <laughs> no, but my, my, my question is, are you going to prove the Dyer Simon inequality? Are you no, to today, it? no. I, but I do, if the time permits, I would like to explain the meaning actually of this theorem, of the second theorem, what it means. And what it means uh, to prove this theorem using extremal properties. Mm -hmm. Since <laughs> till now it sounds like a little bit of gibberish. So now my purpose is to prove you the star using our methods. And for the simplicity, oh, before that, let me remark just, since I promised to, to get back to that issue, to the assumption that an is uh, uh, identically one, all these results have straightforward generalization for general an. So there's, uh, the, the, the thing that I assumed from the beginning that an is one is not restricting me for, for, for really, it's not really restricted me. Now, uh, I will assume for the simplicity that my, oper okay, proof of star, and I will assume for the simplicity that J is periodic operator of period Q. Now, 
Now, <laughs> in order to prove star, I need two following facts. Um, first, is that absolutely continuous spectrum is the union of Q closed intervals and there exists a Monique polynomial of degree Q P so that P is smaller than or equal than 2 uh, on the absolutely continuous spectrum. That's the first fact. And the second fact that I need is the following. <laughs> Suppose K is a compact subset of R and P is a Monique polynomial of degree Q so that P is smaller than or equal than some constant A on K. Then the Lebesgue measure of K is smaller than or equal than 4 times half a to the power of 1 over n. Combining these two facts, we have this. Okay, so let me see if I understand. Mm -hmm. Make sure I understand the statement. Because those are the key ingredients. Exactly. Where? Where? Uh, to the left. To the? Here is the n. Yeah. Or here is Q, just whatever you choose. Yeah, <laughs> Q are the same, exactly. <laughs> just assume that n equals to Q. <laughs> I will show that. Oh, well, for just for now, I would like you to see that actually combining oh. these two statements, we have okay. what uh, we need to, to have. Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> oh, no, but you're ruining the surprise. So the first fact is actually comes from the spectral theory, and we'll explain briefly now. Well, the second fact comes from the classical approximation theory, and it's called poly as inequality. So we'll start with the first fact, since you already uh, all guessed it. Yeah. Uh, we look at the associated eigenvalue equation when is some real number and uh, um, denote by Tn one step, I, I'm looking on the one step transfer matrix which I will denote by Tn of E which is E minus bn minus 1, 1, 0, which transfers the vector psi n, psi n minus 1, into the vector psi n plus 1, psi n. And then we look at the <laughs> n-step transfer matrix, which is defined, I will denote it by phi n of E, and it is just a product of n one-step transfer matrices. Now, uh, the central role in spectral theory of periodic operator played the following object, which Jean said three minutes ago, <laughs> uh, which I will call the discriminant which is the trace 
of one period transfer matrix. And this is a very important object. And what we know about this object is the follows. Delta Q is a real polynomial, of course, of degree Q with Q real simple zeros. Delta Q is greater than or equal than 2 in all its maxima points and it is smaller than or equal than minus 2 in all its minima points. The spectrum is exactly, and when I'm saying spectrum, I'm actually meaning the essential spectrum. Once again, I'm just completely ignoring those eigenvalues. The spectrum is precisely the inverse image of the interval minus 2, 2 under this polynomial. Exactly. It is the union of Q bands so that delta Q is strongly monotone on each band. And if I'll draw the picture, then the picture looks as follows. In E, I have only one parameter. It just depends on E, on the energy. So I have this plus 2, and I have here minus 2. And this is my polynomial. And here are my bands. So therefore, we have the first fact. We see that the absolutely continuous spectrum, it is indeed a, a, a union of Q-closed intervals. And this trace, the discriminant delta Q, is exactly the desired polynomial. Now, as, as it goes for the second fact, first, I would like to reformulate it. And in order to reformulate it, I need one more object which I will call ln, uh, okay, let's start that k is a compact subset of R. Now, ln of k I will define by infimum, I will say in a moment on what, of maximum of all over e's of p of e. When the infimum I'm taking over all monique polynomials of degree n. I'm taking, once again, infimum over all monique polynomials of degree n, and then I'm taking the maximum of the value of the polynomial on this set. And then I can reformulate the fact and state you as a Polyas inequality, which says the following. Suppose we have k compact subset of R, and i is an interval of the same Lebesgue measure. Then ln of the compact set is greater than or equal than ln of the interval, which is exactly equal to the Lebesgue measure of the interval to the power n divided by 2 to the power 2n minus 1. And now in order to finish the proof of the star, I need to tell you how to prove Polyas inequality. And Polyas inequality proven actually by the 
combination of three, in some sense, even more elementary claims, which are, are as follows. First one is that suppose once again we have two compact subsets of R and we have a function from K onto K tilde which is a contraction. Namely, so, uh, the absolute value of the distance between Fx and Fy it's more than or equal to the distance between x and y for any x, y, and k. So are you, are you proving this, uh, this fact right now or what? Yeah, I'm proving you the, po I'm, I'm giving you an idea how to prove the polys inequality. I'm proving this almost completely. Then, ln of the domain is greater than or equal than ln of the image. That's the first fact. First claim. The second claim is as follows. Is that um, for any compact subset of R, we can find a function from K onto an interval of the same Lebesgue measure So that F will be a contraction. And the third claim is actually a, a, to say why the last equality is true. A, is that for any interval I, ln of i is equal to the Lebesgue measure of i to the power of n divided by 2 to the power of 2n minus 1. The proof of the first claim is based on the Lagrange interpolation, which is a way reconstructable normal from, from its values in n plus 1 points, and Chebyshev alternation theorem, which I, <laughs> which I will formulate in a moment. As, as it goes for the second claim, it is really easy to imagine if k is a finite union of intervals. We just push them one towards another until all of them are glued together, and then we have exactly this claim. We have the contraction, and we have the interval of the same Lebesgue measure. And the third claim is, uh, once again, actually the straight, almost straightforward inequality, a straightforward corollary of the Chebyshev alternation theorem. And now it's a good place to uh, state it Chebyshev's alternation theorem which will actually say to us that this infimum is attained and moreover will give us an exact characterization of the polynomial on which it is attained. So it says that the infimum in the definition of Ln is attained for a unique polynomial of degree n Tn characterized by the following. There exists an n plus 1 tuple of points in K, so therefore different points. Therefore, uh, actually, I'm 
kind of assuming without telling you that k is at least 10 points. Otherwise, it's just not true. There exists an n plus 1 tuple of points in k such that Tn attains its maximum on them without terminating signs. Tn of Ei equal to minus 1 to the i plus 1 maximum of Tn of E when E is in K. Now, note that uh, in general, it's quite difficult to guess uh, an external polynomial. It is a very hard task. But uh, if you were lucky and somehow guessed it, then actually Chebyshev alternation theorem allows you to show that it, uh, whatever you guessed, it is indeed extremal. And one thing that I will demonstrate it for, I will, dem I will show you two demonstrations, but first one I will start with showing you that LQ of the spectrum of the periodic operator is exactly two. How do I see that? The existence of the discriminants gives me an inequality. Since I do know that on the spectrum the discriminant is smaller than or equal to two, therefore my LQ is exactly smaller than or equal to two. In order to have an equality, an exact equality, I need n plus one, in this case q plus one points of the alternants. And I will choose them as follows. I will take both of the edges of the first band when I number them from right to left, and then every other left edge, every left edge of every other band. And here, for example, I do have a polynomial of degree five, and I have exactly six points of the alternants. And on this picture, actually, it's easy to see that those points in none of the senses are not unique. Because I could take both of the edges, for example, of this band, and then every right edge for, for every other band. Or I could take some mi mix of them, so I could do a lot of stuff. I mean, this is not unique points. But once I have them, I can conclude about the equival uh, uh, equivalence. No. Equality, that's what I meant. Now, the other example that I would like you to show is that ln of the interval minus 1, 1 is exactly equal to 1 over 2 to the power of n minus 1. And once again, in order to do that, I need two things. I need to have a polynomial which is smaller than this number on the set minus 1, 1, on the uh, interval minus 1, 1, and which have n plus 1 points of the alternance in which it attains actually this value with alternating signs. And the polynomial that I will take is the normalized uh, Chebyshev polynomials of the first kind, cosine n theta. And then, of course, we see that for any x in minus 1, 1, this polynomial is smaller than or equal than 1. So therefore, we have an inequality. And if I will tell you secretly that at the points ei, which are cosine pi i minus 1 over n when i goes from 0 to n, which is exactly n plus 1 points, it attains a 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 with alternating signs. Tn of ei actually equal to minus 1 to i plus 1, 1 over 2 n minus 1. We will see that for, from the Chebyshev alternation theorem, we will see that uh, we have an exact equality. And now by the change of variables, we have the sort claim for any interval i. And therefore, this finishes, finishes proof of the star. For
Because because I'm taking I'm taking actually compact set and an interval which is the same measure of the compact set, but I do need to know what. Yeah. Proof of the statement one is uh, I'm taking Lagrange interpolation, right. and I'm actually using I, I mean the point that I'm using in the Lagrange interpolation somehow comes from the Chebyshev alternation theorem. So That's the proof. It's where, where completely technical. So where does the Lipschitz property of S into the Lipschitz In the second claim. Ah, in the in the when I'm when I'm counting the leading coefficient, then I have that uh, I'm I'm taking points here and there, and then since uh, there are points of the alternance, I'm just doing the replacement. Without that, it just simply doesn't work. I need to replace it in the po in the Lagrange interpolation itself. Now, in order to proceed to the general case, which I will actually write here under the. Have you already now established the theorem to the periodic case? Exactly. So I, I this theorem for the periodic case. Yeah. This proves that this example shows that ln of these intervals is this. But then, by just change of variables, I have the source claim for an interval. Then, then, then I understand too. And that's, all, that's why I proved completely polar inequality. And before that, I proved uh, uh, the fact that uh, my, my absolutely continuous spectrum is a union of bands and a Monique polynomial, which is smaller than 2. Okay, okay. And therefore, com I, I just needed to finish the policy inequality in order to finish the, the periodic case. And for the general case, we proceed just using the additional fact from Han Pearson's subordinacy theory, which says general case of star, of course, not of this. Uh, that um, uh, the limb soup, when n to, to infinity of 1 over n, ln of the delta n of e, is smaller than or equal to zero for almost every e in the absolutely continuous spectrum. And that's one more additional fact which allows us to proceed to the general case. And once again, this fact doesn't, uh, since it's a Hunt uh, Pearson subordinate theory, which is exactly uh, somehow allows us to get rid of the ergodistic assumption. Now, uh, uh, I will say, since I have only two minutes, I will say just two words about this theorem <laughs> without writing anything. Uh, think about free Laplacian. I already told you that the spectrum of the free Laplacian is in a single interval of minus 2, 2. But now, since the potential is constant, we can actually think of it as of any periodic operator of any period. So think of it as a periodic operator of period Q. Then from this theory, we know that it have Q bands. But once again, since we know that it's just an interval minus 2, 2, all these bands are actually glued together. So therefore, we have extremal polynomial, which looks not like that, but it just comes to the 2, get down to the minus 2, and so on, so on. So, and therefore, basically what we show here is that um, a band, every band of an arbitrary periodic operator is smaller than or equal than that of the free Laplacian. And the main idea to show, uh, to, sh to prove that is, is the following. We show that bands actually are grow when, when we move them one towards another. And the maximal case is attained exactly at the moment where all of them are glued together, which is exactly the case of the free Laplacian. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>